I think the biggest change you see once you put assistive technology in is how much personality comes out of these kids because so much of their life, especially when they're completely nonverbal, is people telling them what to do or giving them a forced choice of two. And when you give them these devices, you really see their personality come out and you get to learn them not just as students but like as people, which has been really cool. I want turn. Please. I want to Augmentative and alternative communication devices are ways that students communicate when they don't have their verbal abilities to communicate as their primary means. So it's vitally important we have a way for them to communicate uh, in academics, in social situations, and certainly to express themselves throughout the day. I talked to our assistive technology teacher. She came out, she did an assessment last year for one of my students. She's like, okay, I think we can, I think we are ready for that. And so you go to a training and you learn how the device is structured because it's not structured, you know, like language is structured in your brain. It's all about the motor pattern, it's all about the icons. The content that we cover in the trainings talks about language development, it covers technical aspects such as programming and customizing uh, an AAC device for an individual user, and that's training that teachers and speech pathologists and families really need. Um, that's something that's very, and very important to provide. Last year is when I really started using um, augmented on alternative communication systems with my students. But you do have to start small, and you really do have to intentionally teach it. Uh, I always think back, like, what is typical language development for a child who's going to speak? Like, First, they need to hear it constantly. They need to be exposed to it constantly. So even if your kid isn't able to use it independently, modeling how to use the device is really, really important. Showing them constantly really helps them engage with it and understand the power of it. And also, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to say things that don't make sense, and that's OK. You want a turn? Miss Winkler. Oh, you yeah. like a turn. turn Go put that on my calendar. And so just thinking about it in the mindset of typically developing language has really helped me in understanding like I need to give them time to explore. I need to give them time where I don't give them feedback. That's been my hardest thing. I constantly want to correct my kids and say, no, try this, do this. You're not doing it the right way. But letting them kind of explore it on their own and make mistakes is also really, really powerful. It can open up a whole world. It can open up uh, untapped communication potential. It can allow students to express themselves and self-advocate when they've never had that opportunity before. As soon as you're able to have a conversation with them about, you know, their dog that they played with on the weekend, it really strengthens that relationship and then students are so much more willing to come in, to do the work, to just be happy at school and when the students are happy and engaged at school, the academics come so much easier. <laughs>